in 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Uh, I said it and this, this sums it up well. Like you don't, you don't entertain the circus, you watch it, right? And when a lion comes out and rides the bike, you don't think about it too hard. You just go, okay, that's crazy. The lion's riding the bike. And then you go home and enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I don't feed into the stuff at all. At the end of the day, it's it's all entertainment to a certain degree. So you just hope that people can be smart enough and have a tremendous amount of logic to just go and possibly do research. Folks, it's time to dive into the never-ending drama between Cat Williams and Kevin Hart. So, Cat recently made a pit stop on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast, and let me tell you, he let it all hang out. This episode was almost three hours long, and Cat was on fire. He didn't hold back one bit, throwing shade at Steve Harvey, Michael Blackson, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer. But you know Cat couldn't resist taking a shot at Kevin Hart. He basically called him an industry plant and said he lied about how he got his start in the comedy game. These two have been going at it for years trading punches online and in interviews. It's like a never-ending soap opera of celebrity beef. All right, let's get into the juicy history between Kevin Hart and Cat Williams. These two comedy heavyweights have been at it for nearly a decade, and it's time to spill the beans on their beef. From Cat's controversial comments all over the place to Kevin's measured comebacks, the comedy scene has been a battleground for their ongoing feud. So picture this, Cat Williams wasn't holding anything back when he decided to throw some shade. He didn't just stop at Kevin Hart, he also took a jab at athletes like Shaquille O'Neal, trying their hand at comedy. This feud was already sizzling back in August 2014. I think that Shaq and Russell Simmons should get out of comedy and stay in their lane. They don't see us making a league of professional basketball players under six foot. So what qualifies these dudes because they got a hundred million dollars to come over in comedy and do Shaq's all-star get out of here, you bum. That's right. Before I take the rest of you girls. <laughs> like you took Kevin Hart from me. <laughs> I want my back. You underdig me? It's like a never-ending saga of comedy clashes that's been keeping the entertainment world buzzing for years. Now, let's rewind to February 2016 when things were heating up between Cat Williams and Kevin Hart. During his conspiracy theory tour stop at Atlanta's Phillips Arena, Cat didn't hold back. He straight up called Kevin Hart a puppet, and this made headlines, as reported by Vibe. Cat was adamant that he had earned his stripes in the comedy game and wasn't afraid to take a swipe at Hart. He even said, if Hart's a puppet, that ain't his fault. Cat told people not to hate on a fellow black man out there hustling, even if he wasn't everyone's favorite flavor. He didn't stop there, though. Cat compared himself to other black comedians and emphasized that just because some folks might think he's the best, it doesn't mean he's dissing the others. He gave an analogy, saying it's like getting mad at Kermit the Frog when you should really be directing that anger at Jim Henson. Or it's like saying forget Donald Duck when it's really Walt Disney you should be upset with. Cat had a way with words, no doubt about it. I've already proven that if the best they got in comedy is Kevin Hart, don't you boo a black man working hard, baby? Even if that N is a puppet, it's not his fault. We don't get mad. Just because I'm better than some black dudes doesn't mean I'm better than no black dudes. I'm saying if you want to be mad at Kermit the Frog, don't be mad at Kermit the Frog. Be mad at Jim Henson. Don't say F Donald Duck when you really mean F Walt Disney. Here's the lowdown on how Kevin Hart reacted to all of this. He didn't go full on attack mode, but he had a more subtle response on Instagram. He shared a pic from the 2016 Academy Awards where he was chilling with comedy heavyweights Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock. In his post, he talked about how comedians should stick together and have each other's backs. He emphasized the shared grind it takes to reach the level of success that only a few comedians comedians ever achieve. So, amidst all the drama, this was Kevin Hart's way of reminding everyone that comedians gotta support each other, even when there's some feud brewing in the background. Me and Dave Chappelle with our brother Chris Rock tonight at the Oscars. True professionals understand the importance of sticking together and supporting one another. At the end of the day, we are comedians, and there aren't many that make it to the level that we have made it. But so many doors are open from the success of one comedian, and when you see those doors open, you then have the opportunity to walk through them. It's about helping one another, not trying 
trying to tear each other down. The insecure ones will never understand that support and encouragement. Now, let's take it back to 2016 when Cat Williams turned up the heat in his never-ending feud with Kevin Hart. This time, he took it to the next level, setting the stage for his conspiracy tour show in Philly on March 5th. Cat had a plan, and it was all about stirring up some drama right in Hart's hometown. He threw down a hefty challenge, daring the ride-along star to a $5 million bet. In his own words, he said, I've seen your stuff on social media, and I know what you do, but you do it for fun. If you're serious about it, here's the deal, Kevin. See, I've seen your stuff on social media. Boy, boy, I know you what you do, but you do it for play play. If you do it for real, here it is, Kevin. I got a show at your hometown in Philly. I'm gonna take my special there. On that stage, we can put whatever you want. A full court basketball court, a boxing ring, two microphones for a rap cypher, or you can get your ass in comedy on that stage. But it's $1 million up for each one. That's $5 million, Mr. 28 million in Forbes. Cat didn't hold back, laying out the challenge options, a full court basketball game, a boxing match, a rap cypher with two mics, or the big one, a comedy face off right on stage with a million dollars on the line for each challenge. And he made sure to mention Hart's Forbes earnings and hinted that he'd bring his cash in person. But here's the kicker. He told Hart not to bring any white folks along if he wasn't a puppet. All of this while rocking that signature fur coat of his. Now, just before we wrap it up, let's rewind a bit to when Cat spilled the beans about his arrest in Georgia. He found himself on the ground, ready for his own arrest. According to Cat, a store clerk swiped $1,500 from him, assumed he was up to no good, and even used a racial slur. Cat made it crystal clear. He did what he had to do as a self-employed black man. But then, just a few days later, it looked like Cat had a change of heart about stirring the pot with Kevin Hart. You see, in March 2016, Cat Williams switched gears during an appearance on V103 Atlanta's The Big Tigger Show. He stepped up and offered an apology to Kevin heart for the harsh comments he had dished out during his comedy tour stop in Philly. And I should have never mentioned Kevin Hart's name. That is the reigning king of comedy if you ask for popular consensus. So okay. now the fact that he's a black man like me and the fact that I attacked him with such vitriol at a time when um, our country is already divided in every way it could be divided, mm -hmm. racially, politically, uh, economically, socially, religiously, like the fact that I, while being on stage pretending to be... Cat recognized the shared experiences they both had as black men and expressed remorse for going after Hart with such intensity, especially during a time when the country was already divided. During his chat with the host, Cat admitted that it was regrettable for him to try to embarrass Hart while doing his set. He made a genuine apology, not just to Kevin Hart, but also to Heartbeat Productions, the Plastic Cup Boys, and anyone connected to Kevin Hart. It seemed like a moment of reflection and an attempt to patch things up during that radio appearance. Fast forward to September 2018 and things got even more interesting in the Hart Williams showdown. The spotlight shifted to Tiffany Haddish when Williams, during an interview on V103's Frank and Wanda in the Morning, started taking jabs at her comedy skills and questioned if she could pull off a major tour. Kevin Hart wasn't one to bite his tongue. While promoting their movie Night School on The Breakfast Club, he went to bat for Tiffany Haddish and didn't hold back in dissing Williams. Frustrated, Hart called out Williams for blaming Hollywood and the white man instead of owning up to his own actions when he had a chance to shine. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. Cat was in that position at one you point. You were the guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You off promo shoots. You your promo fucking uh, trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios stopped working with you. Hart spilled the beans that studios stopped working with Williams because of drug issues, and he hammered home the point that Williams had the chance to be a star, but didn't deliver when it counted. Hart straight up challenged Williams, asking if he ever used his platform to help out those coming up in the game. According to Hart, since Williams hadn't done that, he had no business criticizing those who were making waves in the industry. And guess what? The tension just kept on simmering between these two comedians. It was like a comedy beef that just wouldn't quit. The friction came 
about yet again three years ago in September 2021, and the Hart Williams saga was still going strong. Cat Williams didn't hold back when it came to the possibility of a comedy-style battle against Kevin Hart. During an interview with Baltimore radio personality Persia Nicole, as reported by Revolt, Williams made it clear that he considered it cheating for him. With confidence, Williams boldly claimed that he could outshine Hart in a comedy battle, boasting about his extensive catalog of over 10 comedy specials. He even threw in a cheeky twist, saying he could pluck just two jokes from each special, basically making the competition look dead in the water, except for those with the last name prior. Williams brushed off the idea of piling up Hart's impressive stats. 52 movies, 11 specials, 49 TV appearances, and an Emmy. He wrapped it up by hinting that this matchup might not go down as expected, and that it could be a battle people couldn't afford to miss. So Kat, let me ask you, uh, if you would be bothered enough, because I know you're normally very unbothered, to do a versus battle between uh, you and Kevin Hart. A lot of fans want you to do it for the culture, do a comedy battle. Uh, would you be bothered enough to do this? I started first. Oh, come on, come I on. come to me with versus. The first versus ever promoted was Steve Harvey versus Cat Williams. It was the underground king of comedy versus, and, and, and sold as versus. We don't need to ask me if I would have any interest in things that I am the originator of. The comedic rivalry between Hart and Williams, well, it was alive and kicking to say the least. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Just a few weeks ago, Cat Williams didn't hold back as he laid into Kevin Hart during a chat on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast. During that episode on January 3rd, Williams didn't spare any comedians, and Hart was right in the firing line. Cat even tossed out the idea that Hart might be some industry creation. The war of words between these two comedians just kept on rolling during that podcast. Now, in response to Cat Williams' jabs on Shannon Sharp's show, Kevin Hart didn't write a novel. He kept it short and sweet on the platform that used to be Twitter, now known as X. Gotta get that anger up out of you champ. It's honestly sad. Just a day later, Kevin Hart showed up on ESPN's NBA Unplugged and decided to have some fun at Cat Williams' expense. He playfully ribbed Cat by poking holes in some of the wild claims Williams had made on the podcast, like reading 3,000 books a year when he was just a kid between 8 and 12. Yeah, yeah, good luck. Good luck getting me to talk about that horse uh, <laughs> good, good, good luck, okay? You lost me and you got a you lost me and you got a college offer at age seven. Yeah. The online crowd couldn't help but think that Kevin Hart's lighthearted response only fueled the idea that he's some kind of industry creation. People side with Cat more often than not, and they believe that he might be up to something with exposing all the messy dark truths that Kevin Hart has been keeping shut away in his closet. Comments online write things such as Cat Williams has 160 63 IQ, is an avid non-fiction reader, quick-witted, has had a variety of life experiences, and knows everyone's secrets. And another comment said, from when Cat Williams said, you're either on God's side or the other side, I knew he understood the simplicity of life. Now let's switch gears from Cat Williams' no-holds-barred takedown of Kevin Hart. This comedian wasn't holding back. He went on a verbal rampage, spilling all the industry's dirty secrets and putting other comedians in his crosshairs. Cat Williams didn't pull any punches, exposing anyone who had ever talked smack about him. He didn't limit his revelations to fellow comedians. He even dragged in big names like Kevin Hart and Ludacris, accusing them of being part of the Illuminati. Yep, it went that far. And you know what? Even Chris Tucker got caught in Cat Williams' line of fire. Williams claimed that Tucker wasn't the same old Chris we all knew, but rather some Epstein version of himself. But Cat Williams wasn't done yet. At the start of the interview, he took aim at Ricky Smiley, calling him out as a liar and slamming his acting skills. This feud began because Smiley said he was originally cast for the role of Money Mike in Friday After Next. Williams wasn't having any of it and flat out called it a lie. Smiley didn't take it sitting down and addressed Williams on his own show, sticking to his story about the role. He also clarified that the pimp angle for the character was added once Williams took the part. Despite all this, Smiley didn't hold any grudges against Cat Williams. Next up was Cedric the Entertainer, who Cat Williams accused of being a liar too. According to Cat, Cedric swiped a joke from him that he performed back in 1998 on BET's Comic View. Williams claimed that Cedric basically copied that stolen joke and used it in the 2000 film The Original Kings of Comic 
comedy, changing just one word. Even though Cedric denied the accusation, Williams stuck to his guns, saying both Cedric and Steve Harvey had privately apologized for the alleged joke theft. Williams claimed he let it slide for over a decade, but decided to speak out when Cedric denied it in 2022. Lastly, Cat Williams had some strong beliefs about Kevin Hart supposedly selling his soul to the bigwigs, controlling the entertainment biz. He hinted at that old rumor that black male entertainers in Hollywood are pressured into wearing a dress in a movie before they can reach higher levels of fame. This idea, once seen as a conspiracy theory, got more attention as various comedians and actors talked about their own experiences with it. Like, when I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know, but certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down, like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? That's happened to me. Dave Chappelle, for instance, has been vocal about refusing to wear a dress in movies and even turned down a $50 million deal from Comedy Central in 2006 because of it. He made it clear during an appearance on Oprah that he wouldn't compromise on such matters. The interview with Cat Williams laid bare his candid and controversial views on his fellow comedians and the inner workings of the entertainment industry. But moving from Dave Chappelle's insight to Kevin Hart again, it seems like our guy might be facing a bit of a roller coaster ride in the industry, despite all the big support he's got. So, let's dive into what's happening now with Kevin Hart and see how he's navigating these new challenges. Cat's been making waves with his sold-out Dark Matter tour, and the shows that aren't sold out yet, well, they're pretty darn close. Meanwhile, Kevin Hart's been busy with lawsuits and distractions, suing his ex-assistant and all. But let's not forget how Kevin once dissed Cat, comparing him to lions on tricycles, whatever that means. Fast forward to Kevin's recent movie, Lift. Yeah, it hasn't been doing so hot, continuing a trend of not-so-great reviews for his flicks. Sure, there was that one Netflix movie movie where he played a baddie, and it did okay, but now we're wondering if he was just playing himself all along. Now, the good news for some is that Cat Williams' ticket sales are through the roof after his Club Shay Shay interview. People are loving his candidness, and some of his shows were almost sold out even before the interview dropped. Talk about a winning streak. Cat's been his own boss, calling the shots and keeping most of the profits. He's like the Floyd Mayweather of comedy, handling his business. But Kevin Hart's been facing some challenges. His Netflix movie, Lift, hasn't been winning over critics, and it's just another addition to his Netflix flop collection. Seems like people are talking more about his Netflix flop than anything else on the platform. So, what's the deal with Kevin Hart's recent career? We're not saying it's over, but he better hope for a Jumanji Part 177 to keep things rolling. And that's the scoop on the ongoing feud between Cat Williams and Kevin Hart. Cat's been on fire with his sold-out tour, while Kevin's latest movie, Lift, hasn't been lifting off as expected. The comedy world is a roller coaster, and it's clear that Cat Williams isn't pulling any punches, whether he's on stage or exposing the industry's dirty laundry. But here's the kicker. Cat Williams isn't just about the laughs. He's been dropping hints about some industry secrets that might have Kevin Hart and others feeling a bit uncomfortable. The comedy game is evolving, and we'll be right here to keep you in the loop as these two comedians continue to trade jabs both on and off the stage.